Hi, this is week three of business management with accounting and finance. This week, we're going to talk about revenue and cost assumptions in the premium chocolate case. We are in the week three of the semester. I hope you still remember this business case. Well, let's recap the points of this case. This is a new premium chocolate startup business. So in, in this case, you're going to start up a premium chocolate business in Japan or anywhere in the world. But you have to start the business from scratch. This is precondition. Also, uh, the, the requirement of this case is you're going to sell four types of products and then you have six outlets in the beginning because you are, you have to start from scratch you will be required some cost for renovation or, or establishing new brands so that's something you have to think about and finally your goal is to convince your potential investors to invest to your business by showing your business plan financially. The first step when you make a business plan is to define the entire scope of business, which we discussed last week. And then next step is define the scope of your business. In my case, the blue line, blue box shows the scope of my business assumption. So in my case, I excluded the chocolate material suppliers because my business or my, my business will buy some material or ingredients of the chocolate from outside external supplier. That's my basic assumption. But my business includes chocolate manufacturing factory or factories and logistics function and Selling as a selling function, we own the out six outlets. And obviously we have some headquarter function such as such as HR, accounting, marketing and sales, etc. That's the next step. I'd like to I'd like you to define your scope of a business. Otherwise you cannot understand you can never know what numbers is are required to include your business plan and which cost have to you you have to pay to whom that's something you have to clarify in the beginning i guess you already have done all this assumption making then today's goal is i want you to clarify and complete the revenue what are your revenue and what are your costs and i want you to make some basic assumptions about your revenue and the cost but before talking about revenue and the costs let's make sure you understand the term revenue and cost maybe that term cost is easy to understand for you. Cost is cost or expense. In other words, that's expenses or expenditure. The money you have to pay to buy something like products or the service, that's cost or make or make a chocolate. And the revenue is a sales amount by selling your product, which is chocolate. So it's the, the sales revenue is the, in other words, that's income or money you get from your customer. That's revenue. Okay, this is the main part of today. Once you define all the players or stakeholders in your business model, then the next step was to define the scope of your business. The next step is to identify what revenue you're going to have and the what cost you have to pay in more specific. In this chart, for example, on the left-hand side, that's revenue side, 
the revenue is made of the price and the number of sales. So I will use the price and the number of sales for my business assumption. So I will use some index for those two parameters. On the right hand side, the cost side, I need to pay some money to make the product, for example, and the suppliers for the my factory labors. Um, that's the main cost to make a chocolate. In this case, it is called the COGS. COGS stands for cost of goods sold. That's direct cost to make a chocolate. And then also I have to pay some you know, service fee to my partners. For example, if I add some logistics function uh, to somebody else outside external um, partners, um, I have to pay the cost for the service. So it depends on your, the scope of your business. And also I need to pay some cost for my um, indirect labor for let's say um, HR, the counting, the finance, the people at headquarters. And also you have to pay some um, sales expenses to promote the, the brand or the service or the products. That's all the cost that I have to pay. So this is the next exercise. I want you to list up all the revenue uh, parameters, re revenue related parameters and cost related parameters. The most important, importantly, here you should not miss any critical cost, especially if you miss some big amounts of the cost for any reasons, your business will look very bright and like a dream because it looks very it, it looks very successful in terms of the profit amount but you have a big problem without knowing that failure or the mistake and if you um propose your business model business plan to the investors um, that makes a big big problem so from before starting and spread see the exercise I want you to make sure you have you identified all the revenue items and the cost items. Again, it depends on how you define your business and the business scope. And once you did it, list up all the the, the parameters or, or items. And then next, I want you to think about which index or parameters are more changeable. For example. Can you assume accurately the number of sales in the first year of this business? Theoretically, you can calculate, but once you start the business, who knows in reality? In such case, this is a bit risky to put a single number as your assumptions because they are changeable to some extent. So, once you list all the revenue items and the cost items, the next step is again, I want you to identify which one will be changing after you start the business. I call it the changeable parameters or changeable index. This is because once you identify the changeable ones, I want you to simulate by changing those numbers, simulate your business plan. So I want you to keep those index or parameters as a changeable one. And then I want you to list up all the items and put in the Excel sheet once you start the simulation. Okay, then now let's focus on the sales or revenue side. I have three questions here. When you develop a assumption seat for the sales, first question, which parameters you should choose? As I said, those parameters which you include in your business plan 
uh, or, or in the spreadsheet, it should be some changeable one because this is the extremely e extreme assumption. But if you decide, I will sell this premium chocolate for $10 and you will not change this price forever, then you just fix the number. So this is not changeable. So the parameters you choose to, in, to choose will be something changeable because you can easily change or simulate later on by using Excel sheet. I will let you know how to do it later on. The next question, which parameters you can choose? That's all about availability of the data. If you want to change the parameters later on, but if you cannot get such data in reality, that is not impossible. So which data can you get in reality? Which data can you, you cannot get in reality? That's something you have to uh, distinguish. The last question, how much details do you need when considering the potential change to the assumption? Um, for example, um, you have four types of the products in this business case. Are you going to change or, or differentiate the prices across the products? Or would you keep the same price for different types of the products? It all depends on the business strategy. But if we want to change the price by product, you have to assume different price prices for each item. So how much details? In this case, you have to assume four different prices for each. But if you keep the one fixed price, you don't have to do it. So how much details are you going to implement or ex include in your business model? But my suggestion, especially in the beginning, I want you to keep as simple as possible keep your, your business plan as simple as possible because you can add or modify later on. If you have very complicated form of the business model, that's very um, hard to manage or change or, or, or handle all these the, the assumptions. So please start from the simple one and if you think you need it necessary, you can add lines and make it more detailed or make it more complicated in the later stage. And let's move on the cost side. Again, you have the very similar question, but I have a new question, which is D. Are there any costs shared with other operations? Oh, this is very confusing. Uh, in some cases, let's say um, this is not a just one single small startup business. This is a part of a big company. If you work for the big company, large company, and then you start this kind of a new um, small business, you can share some cost with some existing functions in a large company. For example, you have to have your own HR human resource staff only for your business. If you are a part of a large company, you can share the cost of the human resource staff with the one in the large company of yours. Maybe you can share the function and the cost of the finance and accounting and sometimes marketing. In such case, in reality, in this case, you, maybe you don't have to worry about this, but in reality, you have to think about this because this, is, this would be a big problem if you exclude all those shared costs because you are expecting you can get those services for free. But sometimes, even in the same company, this may not be the case. You will be charged for those service, HR service, financing service, um, accounting service. 
So in reality, you have to make sure what cost, even if this is a part of the cost, you have to pay even for your um, internal purpose. So you have to include all those costs in reality. But let's make it simple for this case. For this case, you don't have to worry about the question D, about the cost. But don't miss any critical costs. That is something you have to think about. Okay, once you identify all the revenue items and cost items, the next step is to make your format to put all those assumptions by distinguishing revenue and cost. This is a very simple example. I want you to use Excel spreadsheet. And then in this case, the chart, the format in the, the, the red box uh, represents the revenue assumption. I haven't input any specific numbers yet, but if you look at the one on the, on the top, that's the, the number of sales in the, the first fiscal year, which is 2021, by outlet, by product, because I assume I will uh, have the different number of sales by different outlets and by different products, because my sales strategy is I will dis differentiate the each product by putting different prices, for example then I will have different uh, sales performance, obviously. So I will put different numbers in terms of number of sales in this chart. And next one is about unit price for each outlet or each product. I haven't decided yet. I would change the price by outlet, but in my sales strategy, I would definitely change the price by product. That's why I made this matrix or chart to put my assumption numbers in there. You do not have to any numbers yet, but please prepare this kind of form. What parameters, what index are you going to use in your business plan? And we will change the numbers assumption number assumptions in the matrix later on because i think in my case number of sales and unit price will be changeable and i want it to change when i start simulation that's why this is revenue side and the cost side in my case that's pretty simple maybe too much simple but i just put cogs cost of goods sold how much money you have to pay to make a chocolate. Maybe I should, I should um, separate um, by product because the, I, I said I will differ, uh, differentiate the price by product. That means maybe my, uh, the cost I have to pay for each product will not be the same. But in terms of the outlet, Difference of outlet, because in my case, in my business case, I assume I have one factory. So the cost to, to make a chocolate is not the same by product, but the cost to make a chocolate by outlet may be the same because I am making, manufacturing the chocolate at one place one factory so that is my assumptions that's why i do not have the matrix by outlet for the cost side and if you have other costs please add some lines to show these cost numbers but um, at this point of time forget about any fixed cost this is a format to change the numbers later on because they are changeable. So in my case, my assumption was the number of sales is changeable 
a unit price it is changeable and cost of goods sold will be changeable. Changeable means again, once you start business plan simulation, you will change those assumptions because they are unknown or uncertain at this point of time. If you decide a fixed amount for some cost of revenue, then you don't have to put the number yet, or you don't have to prepare this format. Okay, again, you do not have to put any numbers yet, but I want you to make this format after you clarify and identify all the costs and revenue items. That's the assignment for next week.